American democracy, this thing we cherish, relies on the efforts of hundreds of thousands of election workers all across this country. But just like with Donald Trump's attacks on judges, one party's embrace of election disinformation is having dangerous consequences. Just this week, we learned that Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold saw a 600% increase in the number of threats against her in the wake of the state's efforts to kick Trump off the presidential primary ballot. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. He is a member of the House Judiciary Committee and served as an impeachment manager during Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. Good morning. Thanks for having me back. Good morning. Good yeah. morning. So we're in a in a whole new space now where, you know, Donald Trump threatening judges. you got Donald Trump out here um, creating the kind of havoc in the political space um, that translates on the ground, where election operations are, play out, where uh, votes are tabulated and the process up till this period seemingly worked just fine. How... Congressman, what's your take of how uh, we reinforce the efforts of our secretaries of states and our election officials, uh, not only to protect them from the 600 percent increase in, in, in threats against them, but the, the overall integrity of the system itself to reassure as we get ready to go into this election on the front end, this is going to be a well-run election. This is going to be tightly controlled. And, and it's going to have the level of transparency on the front end that people can trust so that when Trump comes back with his BS on the back end, people are made aware and, and are ready for it. To, to address these threats, unity has to be, you know, the antidote. That means mm -hmm. Republicans and Democrats have to condemn it. And, and we have to say, you know, that we pick our leaders and we choose our policies by voting and not by violence. Uh, second, we have to fund at the federal and state and local level, uh, you know, aggressive uh, prosecutions uh, to make sure that, you know, we're deterring uh, this and holding accountable uh, folks when they do this. And, and then as, as Democrats, I think we will and even, you know, independents and, and reasonable Republicans, we have to say this is an effort, you know, to use process uh, over policy. You know, D Donald Trump uh, and his mega gang, they don't want to talk about policy. No. So they're going to grind this out uh, and, and take us deep into the weeds you know, over process. So, you know, they're going to argue over, uh, not just argue over, they're going to intimidate the people involved in the process because they're completely bankrupt when it comes to the policy. So I'd say, you know, unity and mm -hmm. condemnation, uh, you know, funding the efforts to stop it. Uh, and then as Democrats on the messaging, don't don't get stuck in the process because we, we win on policy. Yeah. One of the yeah. things that I'm constantly thinking about is, one, and asking folks about, folks like you about, is that there is, well, our eyes are open to the kind of threats that come with elections nowadays, the concerns that we have and should continue to have, right, from January 6th on and even before that. And I'm curious if you are less concerned or more concerned about the possibility of political violence in 2024 largely because folks are paying attention, and right, we are having these conversations more consistently. But at the same time, they seem to be growing, the threats. Yeah, much more concerned. Yeah. Uh, we're still a country uh, that's armed to the teeth, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, the most dangerous people mm -hmm. have access to the most dangerous weapons uh, in this country. Uh, the, the violent rhetoric, as we saw, you know, just yesterday from the former president's, uh, you know, truth account, uh, where he's glorifying uh, violence, continues to go up. And, and one, one part of this that really concerns me is that the Department of Justice, you know, who is charged with investigating these threats, they are overwhelmed because the investigators are being threatened. So the people who would be typically investigating someone who's threatening an elected official, you know, or a poll worker, that FBI official, that U.S. attorney is also being threatened. So this is just an attempt, as I said, to overwhelm uh, the system, and, and that makes me very nervous seven months out. So set against that backdrop, you have former President Trump um, attending the funeral of a slain NYPD officer yeah. using that tragedy to make a yeah. case about crime, when in reality, crime in New York City is actually down. Interesting that he cares about crime in a very specific context when he believes it can be weaponized for means of fear when he was not concerned about crime on January 6th, when he was not concerned about the lives of police officers who lost their lives or were um, 
irreparably changed on January 6th. It is only through this one lens that he wants to talk about crime and our men and women in uniform. And by the way, he did not go to the wake of uh, Officer Sicknick. Officer Sicknick. No. He did not offer condolences to his family. So that showboating at uh, that wake in New York was unfortunate. But again, it goes to Alicia's point of how it's all weaponized. It's, it's all weaponized. And I think as, as Democrats, and I say this as a, a brother to two police officers and the son of a cop, you know, we, ha we have to pierce, you know, through this. Uh, because, you know, it, Donald Trump uh, will very cheaply, you know, use police officers, you know, when it benefits him. Right. But again, when uh, police officers raid uh, his house, he now is a part of the effort to want to defund uh, right. their efforts. And so it, it poses a challenge uh, for us. Uh, but I, I do think that, you know, we, we need to tell mm -hmm. the police, you know, you know, we back the blue, he backs the coup. Uh, that's, you know, he will back police officers as long as they're backing him. And, and so when it comes to funding public safety, we have consistently tried to put up money, you know, for community mm -hmm. policing. They have voted against it. When it comes to the union protections that police officers have, we continue to back that, and he would never afford that to him. It's, it's not easy, uh, but if, if we can earn back a little bit of the trust of law enforcement, that'd be great. That's why I'm all in and helping uh, Harry Dunn, who's running uh, for Congress. Uh, we need more police officers in our ranks. We lost Val Demings when she ran for the Senate, and I don't think it hurts us you know, to earn uh, the trust of law enforcement. Congressman, why do you think the narrative for Democrats continues to be that you guys want to defund the police, right? You, there was a small subset yeah. of that conversation, right? It took up a lot of oxygen for a lot of different reasons, some good reasons for conversations yeah. about how this country should deal with criminal justice reform. Um, but that's not actually been what happens in policy. And more importantly, it's not how the leaders of the party, right? When you guys had um, the, the House, you know, Nancy right. Pelosi wasn't doing that. That's right. not the bills that were coming forward. Those, that's not the kind of way that Joe Biden has been working and running the administration. So what can, should the Democrats yeah. be doing to actually make that point to people? Because I, I hear it every once in a while. It doesn't feel consistent and doesn't feel like it goes across the party. I'm curious if you have a reason as to why. Well, we are the, the party of public safety, and we shouldn't be afraid of our shadows. And, and I think a weakness is that sometimes we can't distinguish the signal mm -hmm. and the noise. And, and so you hear a little bit of noise, you know, from those on the farthest left, you know, who would want to defund the police or have like a completely open border. And then we get cautious and think, well, we don't want to upset them. Well, they don't reflect where most Americans are who believe that, you know, they can be safe in their community, that you can have criminal justice reforms that make sure, especially that the black community who's traditionally, you know, uh, suffered uh, under some policing policies are, are treated uh, the same. We, we can do all of that. We, we don't have to choose one or the other, uh, but sometimes we're afraid of our own shadow. And, and, and we can't do that uh, because that's not where the American people are. Uh, and I think we should be proud of the public safety record that you know, we've put forward and run on. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.